Hi, Mr. Richards here. Let's take a look at our Grade 6, Unit 1, Lesson 17 practice problems. What is the volume of this cube? One of the things you should have learned, or hopefully learned in this lesson, is volume is equal to the edge length, the side, to the third power. And so the volume of this cube is equal to 2 to the third power, which is really 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 cubic centimeters. Moving on to 2. Decide if each number on this list is a perfect square. Well, ask yourself, is there a number times itself that gets me to 16? Yes, 4. So 16 is a perfect square. What about, let's look at 25. Why? Because 25 is 5 times 5, so 25 is a perfect square, but 20 is not. What about 100? Is there a number multiplied by itself that gets to 100? Yes, that is 10. 10 times 10 is equal to 100. 144, well, that's going to be 12 times 12, so that works. Which makes us think, oh, 125, the only other number left between 10 and 12 is 11. But 11 times 11 is 121, so 125 is not a perfect square. 13 is not big enough, 14 is not big enough, but 15 is big enough for 225. 15 times 15 is equal to 225, so 225 is a perfect square. And lastly, for 10,000, that's simply going to be 100 times 100. So 10,000 is a perfect square. And to write a sentence that explains your reasoning, we can say, you can find a perfect square by multiplying a whole number by itself. In other words, 4 times 4 is 16, so 16 is the perfect square. 5 times 5 was 25, so 25 is the perfect square. But there's no whole numbers between 4 and 5, so 20 is not a perfect square. And for that matter, neither 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, or 24. Perfect squares are special. Even more special, perhaps, and they might get a little jealous being a perfect square, but I think even more special are perfect cubes. In question three, decide if each number on the list is a perfect cube. Instead of asking ourselves what number times itself is equal to a number, we can ask ourselves what number times itself times itself is equal. Well, in the case of one, this is going to be one times one times one is equal to one, so one is a perfect cube. What number times itself times itself is next? Well, how about two times two times two? That's going to be two times two is four, times two is eight, so eight is a perfect cube, but three is not. Next number on our list is three. Well, guess what? Three times three is nine, times three is 27, so 27 is our perfect cube where nine is not. Next up is 4 times 4 times 4, and actually that is going to be 64, as 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. Now 100, you're going to want to think about, like, oh yeah, it's 100, of course it is, 100 is so nice and clean, but no, 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 is 125, and so 125 is our perfect cube, and since there's no whole numbers in between 4 and 5, 100 is actually not a perfect cube. So when we go to explain what a perfect cube is, we can simply say you can find a perfect cube by multiplying a whole number by itself three times. 
Not two times like perfect squares, but three times. They're special, as are perfect squares. Question four. A square has a side length of four centimeters. What is its area? Sometimes pictures can help. Square, side length of four. Areas length times width are just side squared, so four times four is going to be 16 square centimeters. Now the area is 49 this time, and so we're looking for what number times itself is going to be 49. In other words, what number times itself equals 49? And that number, of course, is 7. I mean, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, so 7 meters is our solution. And then a cube has an edge length of 3 inches. What is its volume? Well, just like our first question, volume is equal to edge length, or side cubed, and so that's going to be 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which results in 27 cubic inches. Now as we move on to question 5, we have to select a bunch of statements that are true. Prism A and B are rectangular prisms. Prism A is 3 inches by 2 inches by 1 inch, and prism B is 1 inch by 1 inch by 6 inches. Select all statements that are true about the two prisms. In question A, they have the same volume. Well, volume for prism A, length times width times height, is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 cubic inches. And in B, our volume is going to be 1 times 1 times 6, which also results in 6 cubic inches. So A is true. What about B? They have the same number of faces. Well, yeah, they're going to have the same number of faces because they're both rectangular prisms. Okay, C. More inch cubes can be packed into prism A than prism B. That's actually false. If they have the same volume, you're going to be getting the same inch cubes into one compared to the other. The two prisms have the same surface area. Well, no, they're not. They have different dimensions. Um, and if you look at prism A, you have a three by two side, you have a three by one side, and you have a two by one side. Well, this area is six, three, and two. You add those up for A, and that's 11 times two would be 22, because again, you can only see half the sides, and three of the sides added up to 11, multiply by two, and you get 22. What about B? Well, if you look here, you have a one by one side, a one by six side, and another one by six side. Well, that's one, six, and six. You add those up and you get 13, and 13 times two is 26, and so they're not the same. E, the surface area of prism B is greater than that of A. Well, we just calculated 26 is bigger than 22, so that is true. Let's look at question six. And to look at question six, what polyhedron can be assembled from this net? What information would you need to find its surface area, be specific, and label the diagram as needed? Well, I see with my little eyes, I spy with my little eyes, these two triangles. And they are special because that tells me that those are the base. And there's two bases that are triangles. So this would be a triangular prism. And what information would we need to know? Well, the side lengths. We would need to know those lengths there for B. We would need this side here for C and C. Uh, we would need A here. We would need our base lengths and side lengths here D. And we would also need to know the height of these triangles, which we'll just call E. You know those things? We can find the surface area because it would enable us to find the areas of all the little pieces. All right, let's continue on to our last question, and that is 
find the surface area of this triangular prism. All measures are in meters. Wow, it's an interesting triangular prism here. Let's break this down into our faces. And the first face I want to look at is the triangle here. Because if I can find the area of this triangle, then um, I have two sides done already. Well, this triangle looks like we have a base of 1 and 2 tenths. And this height coming down is 8 tenths. And so if area of a triangle is equal to base times height divided by 2, we're going to have 1 and 2 tenths times 8 tenths and divided by 2. And 1 and 2 tenths times 8 tenths is 96 hundredths. Divided by 2 is going to be 48 hundredths. Now, you might ask, why'd you bother dividing that by 2, Mr. Richards? Because there's two of them. Well, just for good form, right? So if I multiply this by 2 again, that gets me these two triangles. So the two triangular bases already here to be that 96 hundredths again. Now, we have the three rectangles to think, think about. And so let's look at this rectangle that I'm highlighting in blue, kind of on that back left side, if you will. And so for this rectangle, this top length looks to be 1 and 2 tenths. This one is 1. Area is length times width, so 1 and 2 tenths times 1 gets me, well, 1 and 2 tenths. What about a bottom side here? Well, that looks like it's going to be 1 and 2 tenths times 1 and 2 tenths. So 1 and 2 tenths times 1 and 2 tenths gets me an area for that bottom as 1 and 44 hundredths. Which leaves me now with just one last side. And now that we've colored in all these sides, it kind of gets a little bit confusing maybe. But this rectangle is going to be another 1 and 2 tenths by 1. So 1 and 2 tenths times 1 is 1 and 2 tenths. And now, if we take all of these, we can finish our question. We'll have 96 hundredths plus 1 and 2 tenths plus 1 and 44 hundredths plus 1 and 2 tenths to be our total surface area here of 4 and 8 tenths square meters. So the key with this one I would strongly recommend drawing these shapes out. If you want to use highlighters, if you want to use different colors, that way you can visualize exactly what's going on here. And that is it for this grade six, unit one, lesson 17 practice problems review. Good luck.